everybody? How are we all today? Good. Um, so, we are Cup of Squirrel. We are a YouTube cosplay group. In order, we have here, I'm Skill, Honor, Rhyme, and Guess. And we also have three other of our members. They're just not here due to like responsibility and all that jazz. Which are Yin, Tan, and Access. Uh, pretty much, we have been on YouTube since 2009. We've grown a pretty decent following. Uh, we have. Also, if your audio is really bad, you can't hear what's going on, people are not going to be interested because who wants to 
watch a video that you can't see or hear, which really leads to this. So there are tips and tricks that you can use that are really easy for anybody. To work. You don't have to be a professional or have professional equipment to make things easier to hear or see. So if your scene is too dark, you can always just open the curtains or turn on an extra lamp to brighten the scene. Like I know sometimes uh, if we've done filming in a lot of our houses at night, they'll be like, wow, just the ceiling light is not building. It's still pretty dark. So we'll just go into someone's bedroom, bring a lamp, bring another lamp, and just kind of set them up around the room. And it's a cheap, easy way to light the room. Um, avoid backlighting. Does anybody know what backlighting is? Yeah? It's where there's lighting in the back and it's shining this way, or it's where the video, typically the video is focused on that light, and your face is the faces and the rest of the video gets very dark because it's focusing on that light. Exactly. And so, like they said, with the light source behind, you can't see a person's face. Um, that can be used for a dramatic effect. It can look very, very dramatic, just a silhouette. But a lot of times if you're doing uh, just a regular scene or you know, doing a makeup tutorial, you'll want people to actually be able to see your face. So try avoiding filming the window directly behind you. Uh, you can film outside on a cloudy day to avoid harsh sunlight and shadows. So you'd normally think like, oh, it's super sunny outside, it's a beautiful day, we should go film, which you should, why not? <laughs> um, but if you have overhead sun, like at noon, it's going to make the shadows on your face really harsh. We still film that anyway because it's like, uh, we don't get together that often, so we got to seize the day. Um, but if you have clouds that are out, it definitely helps to kind of uh, make the lighting less harsh and soften the way it looks. So, Woodland's Lens is Uh, where? 
uh, in a basement. Because that seems adventurous, because we also don't have all the, what did I say? We don't have everybody's insurance forms in, so we can't do real yes. policy. <laughs> yeah. Um, why? Because it's fun. How? Well, we're just going to walk down to the basement and accidentally get locked in by the jail. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a purely hypothetical situation that yeah. we are describing to you. We actually did make this video. <laughs> <laughs>
best, wittiest, most wonderfully written things ever, but it's really just a lot of times us playing off each other and we have a great time. Yep. Hey, look, that's a great transition. It's, it's fun. It's improvisation. What are we going to say? Our skits are rarely scripted, so how do we come up with dialogue? Well, um, a lot of the time, this is very scripted. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to ask 
context is uh, people turning to animals when they're harmed by some of their lives. It's cute. It's adorable. It's also sad. But it's very good. Um, so the context is my character, Shigure, is a writer, and so he's trying to figure out what his next novel is going to be. He's very lazy, so he's going to write a fan fiction, and then just change the names and try to publish it. Because that just seems easier than coming up with all the other things and all that. And so I'm pretty sure Alan is early. It is. It's very early. This is an example of a script that we completely improvised because we were just goofing around and it happened. And features a wonderful improvised line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they say that the best writings are as influenced by real life. So. So if you hear a really sad song and you're like, wow, 
the supernatural is really sad. That's the first one that comes to mind. Um, and so you're like, okay, well, I want my audience to feel sad too because this is a really sad moment in the show. And putting those two things together can really get the story across to whoever is seeing it. Another thing that you can think of when you're listening to a song and thinking about it in, uh, about other characters, you can also use a song to kind of show your perspective or a different perspective on a specific character. So say, I don't know, Avatar The Last Airbender. Say you want to make this, this kid's show that seems most of the time very happy and upbeat. You want to bring out the dramatic element and maybe think about what Aang is going through when he realizes that he's been sealed in this block of ice for a hundred years, how that might make him feel. So you're playing on not what most people think of when they think of the show, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm overgeneralizing. It's something that's kind of comedic and funny and light, and you're, you're showing the other side that, oh, maybe this is, kind of hard to get around. It's it's actually a lot more mature and weighty than a lot of people often associate with it's something that's really fun. Does anyone have, if you guys watch cosplay music videos, does anyone have a favorite CMD that they go back to time again? Yeah. Exactly. 
I think what happened, like that one song about um, chiming in or something that never ago and slamming the door in. If you know
up there with this video is a lot more conceptual in the beginning and that it shows more of the relationship. You know, she's unwilling to leave her old life behind. He's a very exciting person, so she eventually goes with him, but it kind of hurts her in the end. It's, it doesn't necessarily follow the whole arc of their story. It doesn't show scene for scene. I mean, a little bit at the end, but it, um, it definitely follows more concepts and ideas and feelings from the show than specific plot-driven points. Okay, so the next is a little bit more general, just uh, film school stuff. Filming tips, rule of thirds. Um, so the rule of thirds is shown by this lovely picture of the door frog. <laughs> um, you divide your screen. You don't have to like actually divide it. You can kind of see it. Um, you should have like the the interesting part offset. So usually not like directly in the middle. It makes you focus in like a specific area. So there should be a place along the lines or on the intersection. So you can see like the frog is along that line and also in that line. Um, it's something that you don't necessarily like have to study to understand. Sometimes uh, people have it naturally where they just can tell. It's, it's mostly just to make things look visually pleasing. So if you're moving away from, you know, the, per the very first slide you showed of uh, our death note videos, the one where, you know, it's more far away, dark in the back, but you can tell that as we've grown as YouTubers and video makers, we're trying to make things a little bit more artistic and visually pleasing. So the rule of thirds is definitely a way you can try to start doing that if you want to. Oh yeah, so this is an example of the rule of So here we have Black Star and Soul hugging uh, from Soul Leader, who is familiar. <laughs> so we have along our line there, it's not that buggy, and then you can also see in the foreground, yeah. Death the Kid in the back of his head, being watching no. this happen. Very distinct. Okay. I don't know if this is going to be any sounds. Okay, stage, where are you 
know, when I was talking to her, I wasn't looking directly at her, and sometimes I'd gesture a little bit out, but I was still uh, directing my comments at her. But it's not as awkward as it seems when you're watching it on camera. It still works for the viewer. So, obviously you want to make sure everyone is in frame and everyone is visible. <laughs>